this kingdom is even more charming than I imagined. Yes, for hundreds of years we have preserved our way of life. That is why I have brought you on this outing today. A history lesson? Precisely. Before we discuss the future of the Foundation, I'm going to teach you about its past. Starting with the village bakery. Hmm. That seems an odd place to start. <laughs> Does this? Willard, my friend. It's a Tuesday. Do tell me. Traditional French croissant with spiced cranberry jam and clotted Christmas cream. Wonderful. We'll have four with tea, please. And where is your regular Tuesday companion? When I tell him what he's missed, he will be terribly envious. <laughs> <laughs> but today, we are on official foundation business. Do you mind if I show them? Be my guest. Please, come this way. This is the very first Festive Heart Foundation Christmas gift. Are you daring to have a Tuesday without me, Willard? Croissants, Your Highness? With Christmas cream? I'll prepare one for you, Your Highness. I'm closing the shop. Sit in peace a moment. Thank you. See, you brought them back to the very beginning. I thought it wise, sire. That is my great-great-aunt Helena, who is the royal baker's daughter. Really? Apparently having a sweet tooth runs in the family because my great-great-uncle, Prince Clovis, frequented this very bakery. And as where Helena caught his eye. And his taste buds. <laughs> Uncle Clovis was the eldest, which made him first in line to be king. But he met a commoner with a beautiful heart. Helena was wrapping gifts for children in need as early as 1919, right here in this bakery. Her beautiful heart was worth more than the throne to Uncle Clovis. So, my great-great-grandfather, Clovis's younger brother, Humphrey, became king and... Clovis was free to marry Helena. And their love started the Festive Heart Foundation in 1921, which turned into a global effort and is 100 years old this Christmas. Humphrey gave us prosperity. Clovis taught us to give. And they both lived happily ever after. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, but Clovis enjoyed far better pastries. <laughs> Croissant for everyone. Ah, oh, please. Uh, uh, Miss Peterson. Lindsay, please, Your Highness. Lindsay, I wanted to ask you to forgive me for deceiving you in New York. I meant well. Honestly, it was a bit of a relief to find out you were the prince. I couldn't for the life of me figure out why an accountant had never wrapped a Christmas gift. Shall we call it even, then? I deceived you, but you labeled me Grinch-hearted, which <laughs> I admit was refreshing. Everyone is usually so careful with their words around me since my father died. Well, I deceived you too. I rewrapped your gifts from the festival. I knew it. D the truth comes out. I couldn't help but okay, somebody had to protect the reputation of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, honestly, sire, you and your family and the foundation already do so admirably. It is quite a story, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Helena and Clovis. Yes. What became him the commoner? Yes. Croissant. <laughs> yes. You heard him. He said retirement. He said nearing retirement age. That doesn't mean Willard is retiring. Well, what better way than to go out with a splashy Christmas gala? And what of your right? Then I want the international director position. Oh. I'd be perfect. <laughs> Would you now? Well, what if he brought the three of us here to test us, to see who's better suited? Well, if you are right, and I don't think you are, I'd be interested in the position as well. Ah, well, may the best man win. Or woman. What about you, Lindsay? Should I consider you a competitor? Hello, Earth to Lindsay. I'm so sorry. Were you speaking to me? Well, what have you got there that has your rapt attention? I was just working on an idea for the gala. Go on. Let's hear it. Okay, well, when Willard was talking to us about the future of the Foundation, I sensed that the royal family in Parliament might need some convincing. Um, 
Little bloods have been always stuck in their tradition. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, when the prince was at the bakery, he was so heartfelt. You know, he's telling a story, and I think that a story is the best way to convince someone. Go on. <laughs> what if we told the story of the foundation of the gala? Using a series of gifts. Each gift box would contain a piece of the 100th year anniversary story. And then they could be unwrapped at different points during the gala, perhaps by the queen or the prince. And this gift? Oh, that's the last gift. So, the last gift would then reveal the future of the Foundation. And if the royal family reveals the future of the Foundation in front of their subjects, then surely people would agree. Well, what's this grand future that you're referring to? I haven't gotten that far yet. It is, Shane. These are the plans for the gala thus far. Now, uh, the orchestra will be positioned here. Uh, platform here, dance floor, and this is our pastries table. Looks lovely. I've left this space blank. I was thinking of preparing a, a presentation of sorts to commemorate the foundation. I think that we should tell a story using gifts. And the last gift should reveal the future. Imagine if the queen or the prince opened all the gifts in front of the guests. The member of parliament would surely be convinced. That is a fine idea, Shane. Very good work. Tilly, Lindsay, how do you feel about Shane's idea? Yeah, very fine indeed. Excellent. I will speak to Prince Aiden. I think he should be the one to open each gift at the gala as the future king. But it will be difficult for him to work closely with us this week. He needs to prepare for the arrival of the princess. Who? Prince Aiden was told just yesterday that he's been matched with Princess Dahlia of Marquesa. Matched, as in to marry? Well, it's still the ways in royal families to strengthen kingdoms through marriage, even in this modern age. Wow, can't imagine. The princess will arrive just before Christmas to meet the prince and to attend the gala. Well, I'm quite fond of Aiden. I do hope it works out. Yes. So, as we're planning, let's just say we shouldn't be surprised if our gala includes an engagement. <laughs> This is exciting. Oh, I know. There's nothing that invites the holiday spirit more than a Christmas tree lighting. In Mumbai, as part of our Christmas tradition, after lighting our Christmas trees, we eat a slice of plum cake. Oh, that sounds so wonderful. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Beldonia. It is my great honor to announce the presence of His Royal Highness, Prince Aiden. Good evening. It is lovely to be here celebrating the Kingdom Christmas tradition with you. Before we count down and light our magnificent tree, I would like to thank you all. It has always been our heartfelt wish that every child receive a gift under the tree, and it is with great excitement that we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Festive Heart Foundation this Christmas. As we count down and light our tree, let us be mindful that our light shines beyond Baldonia to countless numbers of children across the globe. Now, shall we? Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, uh, <laughs> Perhaps the Christmas elves didn't hear us. Shall we try again? Louder this time. All right, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. 